Now we're going to look at the mechanism of how nucleophilic hydrides like sodium borohydride, NaBH4, or lithium aluminum hydride, LAH, can selectively reduce a carbonyl without reducing a carbon-carbon pi bond. So the reduction happens here, but not here. Sodium borohydride consists of both a sodium ion and a borohydride ion. The borohydride ion is the hydride nucleophile. Lithium aluminum hydride, LAH, consists of a lithium ion and the aluminum hydride ion. Borohydride and aluminum hydride are isoelectronic, but aluminum hydride has a larger central atom and therefore a larger and more polarizable electron cloud. So LAH is stronger. Since we're reducing a ketone here, the mechanism will be essentially the same whether we use sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. Since sodium borohydride is less reactive and less expensive, we'll start using that. The first step of our mechanism is nucleophilic attack by the borohydride at the carbonyl carbon. This exceeds the octet on the carbonyl carbon, and so we have to change this pi bond into a lone pair. As a result, we get an alkoxide, and we need some weak acid to protonate it. Sodium borohydride is usually used in methanol. Water will work too, but the methanol acts as a weak acid that supplies the proton. So, the solvent is the source of protons, the alkoxide acts as the base, and this is just run-of-the-mill proton transfer to give us our final product, the alcohol. So, our solvent here, we could use water just as easily, or another alcohol. Any weak acid works well. I should also point out that LAH would do exactly the same thing in this case. There's no reason to use LAH. That's like killing a cockroach by hitting it with a sledgehammer as hard as you can. You don't need a sledgehammer to reduce a ketone. You need a sledgehammer when you've got either a carboxylic acid or an ester. Since LAH is a stronger nucleophile, you use it for more oxidized substrates when the carbonyl carbon is also connected to another oxygen besides the carbonyl oxygen. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's talk about the stereochemistry. Stereochemistry of reduction of a carbonyl. If your substrate is an unsymmetrical ketone, like in this case, 2-butanone, or you could also call it ethyl-methyl ketone, but anyway, it's got an ethyl group on one side and the methyl on the other. So we get a pair of enantiomers, an R alcohol and an S alcohol. The reason for that, that carbonyl carbon is sp2 hybridized, which means the molecule is planar right there. So the nucleophile can attack from below the plane. This would give us the OH on a dash, or above the plane, which would give us the OH on a wedge. So you'll always get a racemic mixture if the alcohol formed is on a chirality center. Now back to lithium aluminum hydride, the stronger of the two hydride nucleophiles. When would we need to use the sledgehammer? The answer is we use it with carboxylic acids or esters. In either case, the carbonyl oxide or the carbonyl carbon is attached to another oxygen, making these more oxidized. Borohydride is too weak a nucleophile to perform nucleophilic attack here. The central atom in borohydride, boron, it's still not very big. It's more polarizable than a hydrogen 1s orbital, but not by a whole lot. LAH, on the other hand, has a larger central atom. Aluminum is larger than boron. Being larger, it is more polarizable. Being more polarizable, LAH is a stronger nucleophile. The mechanism to do this requires two equivalents of lithium aluminum hydride, followed by water to act as a weak base. 
First, we do nucleophilic attack by the hydride on the carbonyl carbon. This exceeds the octet on the carbonyl carbon, and we need to change this pi bond into a lone pair. The second step is loss of a leaving group, where one of the oxygen lone pairs becomes a carbonyl again, which exceeds the octet on the carbonyl, and so we actually get a hydroxide leaving. This results in an aldehyde. Our third step is nucleophilic attack once again, where our extra equivalent of aluminum hydride ion attacks the carbonyl carbon, which exceeds the octet, and so now we make another alkoxide. Note that this is the hydrogen that was added by the hydride in that first nucleophilic attack, and we should also note that we added one here in the very first step. Our final step is proton transfer, where the alkoxide that we generated in the second nucleophilic attack step acts as a base, takes a proton from our water, and we get our final alcohol. And we should note that on the alpha carbon, we added both of these hydrogens. Those are the ones that were added by the aluminum hydride. So we added two hydrogen atoms. That's why we needed two hydrides. Now consider the pi bonds in this molecule. We have a ketone, an alkene, and an ester. What will be the different results of doing reduction using our three different reagents? Catalytic hydrogenation versus LAH versus NABH4. Catalytic hydrogenation can reduce both the ketone and the alkene. Just using platinum as the catalyst, though, it's not strong enough to reduce the ester. It should be noted that with the different catalysts, like copper chromium oxide under high pressure, you can perform catalytic hydrogenation of the ester, but H2NPT is not sufficient. Sodium borohydride just reduces the ketone. It leaves the alkene alone. Notice that is still intact, as is the ester. Borohydride is not strong enough to reduce the ester. Now, what do you think will happen with LAH? LAH is a stronger oxidizing agent than sodium borohydride. It will reduce the ester, whereas borohydride wouldn't. It won't, however, mess with the alkene. Pause your video and draw the product you would expect from excess LAH. On the side of the molecule that contained the ketone and the alkene, we can see that the ketone has been reduced to an alcohol. The LAH is also strong enough to reduce the carbonyl ester to an alcohol and to open the ring when the carbonyl reforms. So, the cyclic ester has become a diol. This oxygen was the original carbonyl oxygen, whereas this oxygen came from the bridging oxygen. Can you match these different reagents to the outcomes? It'll most likely be on the tests.